Okay, let's try this again. The, uh, these bubbles that I was zoomed in too close and the video quality was a little blurry. So let's try it again. So we're going to, whatever your background color is, this is just practice, okay? Whatever your background color is, I just chose um, colors that I didn't use that much, that I had a lot of to do this. We're going to do the top part of our bubble, which is the shadow part, with a slightly darker hue of our background color. So I've added just the very tip of my paintbrush. I've added just touched it into the black and mixed it into my um, my deep violet that I'm using. Okay, so let me get my other brush ready. We're going to do the top half of our bubble, which is a circle. We're going to do that with our darker color. Like that. And we're going to take our other brush, which I like to use mine slightly damp, and blend towards the center and trying to make sure that we don't paint out all our color that's in the center. And trying to not have a harsh line. So if you have to rinse, you can come back with a clean brush. Okay. And just keep blending it till it looks nice for you. Okay, rinse both of our brushes so they're ready. Come back with your, your white for the bottom part of your bubble. And if you can't draw a circle, like I cannot draw a circle, you could pencil it in first very lightly. Oops, too much. Just trying to have a little bit of color on there to blend towards the center. Okay, get rid of some of that. And again, blend out towards your center. Use that water bead. Do you ever notice? Whenever you're using a small brush, there's always that water bead that just comes out of nowhere, running down your brush to get right in the middle of everything and mess it up for you. Well, that's just what was happening there. Okay. So again, I'm trying not to have that harsh line. Blending it towards the center. and back into my white and put in a highlight following the shape of the bubble and on the bottom where it's reflecting off. Now, bubbles are opposite of what you would think. You would think, you know, the light's coming from the top, that that would be the top part, you know, that it would be like that. But that's not true. It reflects it, so it's like you got to think backwards. It's kind of weird. Um, so that that's one way of doing. If say you're say it's just a water drop and it's sitting on the table, you're going to do the same thing, the top half in your darker color. Blend it down towards the center, being careful not to 
paint out all your background color. Trying not to leave harsh lines, which sometimes is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Okay. Then, now because it's sitting on something, the bottom's not perfectly round. It's round, but it's kind of a flat round, like, like that, kind of flat round. Same thing, blend it through the center, trying not to leave harsh lines. So, because it is sitting on something, it has a shadow. So I'm going to take my liner brush or detail brush and go lightly underneath and then pull down away from the bubble or droplet. Casting a shadow. Then back into my white, giving it the highlight in the shape of the water droplet. And where it comes out at the bottom. And then pull a little reflection into the shadow. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, and then there's your teardrop shape. Dark color first. Blending it down towards the middle. the harsh line. Back into your white for the bottom. Blending it towards the middle. Do my white and then do the highlight. Which way is your light coming from? Oh, let's say it's coming from over here this time. So if it's coming in on this side, it's coming out down here. Okay. So, because it's a teardrop, you know, it's on something, so. It is going to have a shadow. A little bit under the bottom there. Blend it down away, pulling it away. Come over this way a little more. Pull it away. Maybe it doesn't come down that far. A little bit more shadow. 
and a little reflection into the shadow. I'm going to put it over here because that's where my light is. Like that. Now what you missed over here, because I was zoomed in too close, was uh, when you have your bubbles that are just floating in the air, you're going to, don't line them up, you're going to place them, like stagger them, and then come back and add a few little dots, you know, like this, with your brush and just touch a few little dots in randomly and it, it helps give that uh, floating effect. So I did a, a few different ones on here and then you know since you have your paint out and you've got your paper just keep practicing. The more you practice the better you get at it. Just knowing the basics behind getting it there is a huge help. So I thank you for watching. Get out your brushes and your paints and give it a practice and you'll be able to add some major interest to your paintings. Like if you're painting a flower, adding those water droplets onto a flower just looks absolutely beautiful. So thank you again for watching and um, have fun.